you ever played the game Boppet, where the toy gives you an action that you need to do as quickly as possible? Well, today we're going to turn our micro bits into a Boppet game. The micro bits have got buttons and they've got sensors inside them, and we're going to use these to detect different things. So the idea of the game is that we're going to use the LED screens to randomly show you an action that you need to do on your micro bits, such as press a button or shake it, etc. And each time you get it correct, you get a point. If you get it wrong, it'll be game over. We're going to set a timer so you've only got 20 seconds to get as many right as you can. So here comes the instructions. Okay, so to follow along with the steps for this project, go to 123codes.org and put in the project code F788. You click on Start Project and that's going to bring you to the step-by-step -step instructions. Okay, so this is a microbit game that's called Bop It. So there's a popular toy that you, you do different actions and if you get an action wrong, the game is over. If you get the action right, you keep, the game keeps on going. So we're going to make something similar using our micro bits. So we're using the micro bits, you can detect different actions, button presses on A, B or A, B together, or shake or tilt and so on. And we're going to use those um, for the game. So we're going to, the way the game is going to work is the micro bit itself is going to display um, an instruction on what action you need to do. And you need to do it as quick as possible because you just have 20 seconds to get as many correct as you can. Okay, so let's get going. So step number one, we're going to create a new microbit project. So we're going to go to the Make Code website and we're going to open up a new project. So start with the blank project editor. Okay, so step number two, we're going to create a variable called action and we're going to use this to store and remember a random action. So let's do that. So we're going to go to variables, make a variable and we'll call it action. And the code is we're, we're going to initially set action to minus one at the beginning. So into the on start block. So get set action and set it to minus one. The next step, step number three, we're going to add a start a start countdown block. So we're going to start the countdown at 20,000 milliseconds, which is equal to 20 seconds. So 1,000 milliseconds in each second. That's what milli stands for. So let's do that. So let's go into advanced and game. And in there, there's a start countdown milliseconds. So it defaults to... 10,000, but we're going to change that to 20,000. Okay, step number four. We're going to set the action to, to a random number. So this random number depends, the amount of random numbers that we're going to use depends on the amount of actions that we're going to use. So we're going to have three different actions. So we're going to set the random number between zero and two. So zero, one, and two are the options that it could possibly, uh, possibly be. So inside the forever block, we're going to add an if then. So let's go into logic to get that. If then, inside forever, let's bring that down here. And we're going to say if action, so the variable action is equal to minus one. So Remember, we just set it to minus one at the start of the game. So if it is equal to, to minus one, we're going to set it to a random number between zero and two. So we need to go into logic to get an equals two block. And put that inside, get our variable block and say minus one. So if action equals to minus one, we're going to set action two. Um, and is it in math for a random? It is. So into math and pick random and we're going to say between zero and two so next step is step number five in this step we're going to display an image on our micro bits telling the user what action they need to do so in the previous step we've set action to a random number between zero and two so if action is equal to zero it means the user should press the a button and we're going to show a left arrow if the action is equal to one, we're gonna, the user should press the B button and we're gonna show an arrow right. And if action is equal to two, the user should press the A and B buttons together and we're gonna show arrows left and right. So left arrow for action equals zero, right arrow for action equals one, 
and left and right arrow for action equals two. So we're going to be adding code underneath our previous if that we added. So let's jump back into our code, go to logic, give an if then else, we put it underneath. Let's just give ourselves a bit of space. So let's set up this if then else. So we need one if and two else if. So let's add in two else ifs and delete this else at the end. Okay, there we go. Now we're checking what the action is equal to in these. So we've already added that block. So let's just duplicate this three times. Save ourselves some time. And we're going to check if it's equal to zero first, then one, then two. And now we're going to show the images. So I'm going to, there, there is a show icon block that has a kind of library of different images that you can show. There is also, um, you can show arrows, so north, south, east and west and so on. And um, if you wanted to use those, you can, but I'm just going to simply use the show LEDs block and set it on for the, the blocks that I want to show. So let's see. So action equals zero. We're going to show a left arrow. Ooh, get rid of that. Um, oh, let's just drag it in rather than duplicating. And get them in each one. Scroll down. So if action equals one, we're going to show a right arrow. And if action equals two, then left and right arrow. So if you want, you can kind of play around with what way you want to display the arrows. Um, you know, there's probably a couple of different ways you can do it, but this is the way I'm going to do it myself. Okay. So then moving on to step number six. So nearly there. Now that we've showed the, the different uh, images of the different arrows, we're going to need to program the buttons to check what the user presses. Actually, before we do that, let's just check that this is working. So I'm going to refresh. So it starts a new game. So we can see that it's showing the left arrow. I'll refresh again. Maybe let's show a different one. It's random. Yeah, this time the right arrow. And then you have the two arrows as well. Okay. So that's moving on to move on to program the buttons. So we're going to program the buttons to check if you press the right one. If you get it right, you get a point. And if you get it wrong, it's game over. So here's the code that we need to add for each button. So on button A pressed. So if action equals zero, change score by one. So you, you've got it right you get a point and we'll set the action to minus one again. Doing that will mean, sorry, if I jump back up here, that in our forever block, we're going to, we're actually checking, we're constantly checking if action equals to minus one. And if it does, it's going to set it to a random number. So if you get it right, you're going to get a point. It's going to set action to minus one, which starts the next round of the game because it'll choose a random number and so on. If you get it wrong, so if action is equal to, if you press the button A and action is not equal to zero, so if it's one or two, then you've got it wrong. What we're going to do is set action to minus two so that it doesn't do an, a new round. And we're just going to use the game over block to end the game. So the game over block does a couple of things. It ends the game. It does a little animation and then it shows you what score you had for the game. So that's on button A pressed on button B. B pressed is here. So if action equals one, again, we're going to change score by one, set action to minus one for the new round. And then if you get it wrong, again, we're going to do game over. And for A and B together, action should be equal to two. So let's start adding these. We'll do on button A pressed first. Drag it in here, bit of space. So we need an if then else. And again, I'm going to duplicate these blocks to save myself some time. So if action equals zero, we are changing score by one and set action to minus one. So I'm going to game to get the change score. And I will just duplicate this here. And take out that. So set action to minus one to go again. Now I'm going to duplicate that block and we're going to, so if you get it wrong, minus two and into game again for game over. Like so now I'm going to just scroll over and duplicate, oh, duplicate this group of blocks twice to save myself some time. So 
you'll see here that when I duplicate these blocks that they actually have this ghost effect over them. That means um, that you can only have one on button A pressed. You can't have two on button A pressed blocks in there. It can only cater for one of these. It can only handle one of these. So the minute I change this to on button B pressed, it comes alive, it stops, it takes away that ghosting effect. So for B, we're saying if action is equal to one, change score by one, set action to minus one, they're, they're all correct. And for A and B together, if action is equal to two, you get a point, otherwise you get it wrong and game over. So that should be the code. Let's refresh and test it out. So the game should start and I have 20 seconds to get it right. Just get as many as I can right. So that's two arrows, A and B, A and B. Now what I'm going to actually do is it's saying, telling me to press the B button, but I'm going to press the A button on purpose. And we can see it kicks into the game over animation. And it should show you my score. I think I got three or four of them right. Game over. Score. Four. Okay, so let's try that again. And this time I'm going to keep on guessing them or get doing them correctly. And we'll see if the, the, the countdown works. So I should have about 20 seconds to get as many as I can write. So we saw there, there was a few in a row that was asked me to press the B button just because it's completely random. So there's no, there's no, um, routine or there's no kind of way that it always happens. Okay. So there we go. 20 seconds has elapsed. So we can see the game over kicking in and it should show you my score. Hmm, there's a, maybe a little glitch in the game there and that it's still showing the right arrow. Um, which is strange because I've set action is equal to minus two. So that's not meant to be showing. So score is 10. Yeah, as you can see, it's still flashing this. So let me have a quick look at the code and see if I can figure out why that's happening. Okay, so I figured out what the problem is. If the game ends, so if the countdown elapses and you get down to zero and um, action hasn't been set to minus two, so if the last round you got the the you press the right button, then action is going to be equal to minus one, or it's going to be set to a random number. But the the, the countdown has elapsed, so it's in a game over state. But we still have action equal to you know one of the random numbers, so it's going to still flash one of the um, one of the one of the arrows to show. So what we need to do is we just need to check if the game is over. So we're going to go into logic. We're going to get it. And if then, and put it at the very top of the forever. You could maybe extend this if then as well if you wanted, but I'm just going to do it this way. So we're going to say if I'm going to go into the game toolbox, is game over? So that's going to check if the game is over or not. And if it is, we're going to set action to minus two. So once it's set to minus two, it means it won't be reset into a random number and therefore won't be flashing one of the arrow images. So let's test that out. We've added the code, we'll press play and we'll start a new game. So the key here is I'm not to get the, any of these wrong because it needs to, countdown needs to go down to zero, but without getting any wrong, we should should see that it kicks into the game over animation and shows the score. So there we go. The countdown has elapsed. It's game over. And it's not flashing the arrows here as um, like it was previously. So this seems to be working and it'll show me, show me my score. So I got 12. Okay. So that is step six. Step seven is if you want to do it, it's a challenge. So you could, and the challenge is to add in another action and an image to display to the user to, to tell them what to do. So if you wanted, you could, um, and we'll do it now. We'll extend this, uh, pick random number block. So it's between zero and three. So it's not just three numbers anymore. It's going to be four. So let's do that now. So pick zero to three. And we're going to use the on shake, but we also need, first of all, 
I'm going to need to extend this if here to another else if and say if action equals three and what will we do for shake let's maybe we could just do alternating ones which would give an idea of shaking maybe you can put in whatever you think represents shaking and now we're going to need to put in an on shake block so that's an input as it's an input to the micro bit you're, you're sending it a message as opposed to it's outputting or sending a message to you so on shake let's duplicate all this if if action equals three get your point otherwise game over so i'm going to download that now i'm going to call it bop it and i'm going to put it onto my micro bit and see how it works for real i've used a usb cable to download the game onto my micro bit so I'm going to test it out and see how many I can get right in 20 seconds without getting any wrong. So doing pretty good so far. Shake. Shake again. A and B. Okay, that's my 20 seconds. So it'll do it, its little animation and tell me game over and give me my final score. So microbits have an accelerometer sensor in them, and that's what's used to detect the shake. But it, it can also detect if it's tilted left, right, forward, back, even flipped upside down. So if you wanted, you could add those actions into your game just to make it a little bit more difficult, but hopefully more fun. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, please make sure to subscribe. Each week we add in new videos where we do different coding projects.